Are people's cryptos safe today? Today, yes, yes. In five years, we'll. Hey folks, Flo here with Blockchain North. We're doing an exclusive and last minute interview to talk about quantum. It's a hot topic this week. We know you have a lot of questions. What is this news by Google? What does it mean for us uh, Kryptonians? I have a fantastic guest today who turns out to have been a speaker at our first event in Montreal uh, about a month and a half ago. His name is Pierre-Luc Dallaire de Mer. Maybe a bit hard for you Anglophones to pronounce, but just remember Pierre-Luc. And he is a doctor on, in, in quantum physics, working at the University of Calgary. And he is also a blockchain entrepreneur. He is building a quantum resistant wallet, but he'll tell us about this. Pierre-Luc, welcome to you. Uh, always great to be on your show. Ah, nice. I think it's the second time indeed. So look, I mean, before we get into the, you know, this week's big news, I think maybe to set the stage, it would be useful if you explained, if you can, and I know you're a professor, but if you could tell us in like a minute what quantum computing is. So your, your, your computer, the one you have in front of you is classical. So the bits, if you want, are like uh, either zero or one. In a quantum computer, we're using the laws of the uh, quantum physics, so of the, the, the atoms of the molecules, you uh, make more general calculations where uh, information bits can be uh, both zeros and one at the same time. And um, this enables like new types of calculation, which are not possible on your uh, laptop or your classical computer. And one of the main application is uh, breaking the cryptography of the internet. So uh, whether it is like the, the, the cryptography that encodes our video now or say the cryptography that secures the your crypto wallet, uh, those will be vulnerable by quantum computers. So so it, it's really, it's a more general way to use uh, the rules of nature to do calculation, which would not be possible otherwise uh, with our standard transistors. And this is perhaps a silly question, but why would we want to break crypto cryptography, whether it be of cryptocurrencies? And of course, we'll talk about that in a moment, but also video coding, for example. Why, why, why are we pursuing this? Uh, it's a, uh, uh, but between countries, co countries have been encoding their secrets, uh, for millennia. So, 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 uh, uh centuries and like thousands of years. Yep. Um, and every, uh, so if every de decades or like every uh, eras, there's a better codes that come in. come in. But if you can, you can um, capture the codes of an adversary and decode them, then you have a better information about what they want to do. Right. So, so like it's um, b b b it's a game that has been going on between countries for for years. And the, the when we learned that, learned that with these new computers, we would be able to break the codes of our adversaries. We decided to build, build those machines, machines, and same for them. Like uh, they are also building uh, machines that would be able to break our own crypto. crypto. So it's a, it's a strategic. Basically, it's a strategic tool. Yeah, it's a strategic technology. So in some sense, uh, like weapons. But the, those computers, they don't just break crypto. They also they can also be used to simulate uh, new materials, new drugs. Um, do optimization and this is great for the commercial sector so it's really a dual use technology where it can be used as a weapon but it can also be used to improve everyone's life so that's why those machines are being built both by governments and large corporations uh, with the aim on one side of making the capital of our adversaries making better uh, products uh, to improve the life of uh, people. But the consequence is that we now have to avoid the cryptography yeah. to protect again, uh, uh, like a malicious entities who will, will have quantum computers at some point in the next decade. Yeah. And, and I assume it applies to any kind of industry. So it could be applied to the energy sector, to the health sector, uh, to, to many others. Are any countries in the world in the lead right now? I would say that two. Leading countries are the United States and China. So Canada is punching above its weight 
uh, like, like in the field. Uh, but, but at scale, the very large budgets for building large quantum computers are really uh, centered around the United States and China, like where they have uh, thousands of people like working on those machines. And it makes sense, of course, geostrategically that those two, you know, top leaders of, of the world right now be, be at the forefront. Yeah. And it's it very parallel to nuclear weapons. So often like com countries with nuclear program will also have con quantum computing program, except Russia. So. Okay. And I understand that um, quantum computing, like any major disruptive technology, it, it seems like it happens overnight. But of course, it, it takes uh, years, if not decades of investments, often by governments as well, because of the reasons you mentioned, of course, that it's strategic. Um, where are we at, actually? With, because I, I don't think, do we have quantum computers right now in use or, or, or is it still being developed? Not useful ones. So like the, we learned to break it around the 90. Uh, that, that, that's when see, the NSA started like investing a lot of money to it, like the Department of Defense. We've, uh, like the first, uh, qubits, like the, the zero one proposition, it was done in the late nineties. Uh, all like the early 2000, the 2010, then we started having like uh, many qubits. Then we, we entangle like qubits and then we have like five of them, 10 of them, 20, 50, 100, 1000 in the recent years. And um, what we need to break cryptography went from, say, say uh, 10 billion qubits to 1 million, uh, like in the recent years. So both the size of the quantum computers and how many we need to break cryptography are going down. down. And we expect the two lines will cross uh, within 5 to 10 years. years. Uh, okay. so, so right now... Right now, we're kind of at the transistor stage of quantum computers. But when we have several of those transistors, then crypto starts to melt. So it's actually a sharp transition. Well, let's talk about crypto and, and crypto currencies and blockchains specifically, since that's uh, what we talk about and what our audience will, will want to hear about. So for those who haven't heard, it would, be the, it would have been hard. You'd have to be under a rock this week to not hear that uh, Google announced its uh, Willow, uh, its first quantum computing chip, basically. Um, which marks a, a breakthrough in quantum technology. And you'll tell us how much of a breakthrough that is uh, by drastically reducing computational errors. Um, and they say, you know, that, that while Willow's 105 qubits uh, fall short of, you know, threatening Bitcoin and other blockchain security today, it does raise long-term concerns uh, about blockchains encryption in the not so distant future. First off, your reaction. Is that a, a, a fair characterization? Were you surprised about this news? Uh, did you see it coming? And, and is it, you know, really a major milestone? Uh, it, it is a major milestone. It's not a completely new news in the field in the sense that like it's results that were known since this summer, but now they got like the papers published and they made the official announcement. Uh, it is a critical milestone. And, uh, and there are two aspects to the, the announcement that, that we saw, um, like this week. Like, so they say, okay, they're solving this problem that would take like billions of years, like on casting off a future. That's not the important part. It, 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 it's really like, a, th that part is really like an, in, like an, in, uh, like a, an intricate, uh, benchmark for quantum computers and like it's quite technical. Well, it's impressive, but like it, uh, it's useless. You're sampling random numbers or from a specific distribution. Uh, the important part is really the reducing errors. So, so if you played with quantum computing platform, you've probably like it, the, the more operations you do, like the worse is your result. Uh, that's on the free platform. Uh, but in the nineties, it was predicted that if your errors uh, are low enough, th then you can get in a regime where the more qubits you add, the less error the quantum computer does. So it's as if like the more gates you add, like the, the better the result gets. Yeah. And this is the regime that they have achieved. Yeah, they achieved. So they kind of they kind pass, of, it, it, it's really, it's, it's called a threshold. So they pass this threshold sure. where the, the more uh, computing, quantum computing power we have, uh, the more, uh, the, 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 the bigger the quantum algorithms we can run. And like the more settling it is to cryptography. Okay. So, so the next step for them is taking like the, the prototype that they have, they have. They make it bigger, bigger, and they do right. demonstrations until cryptography breaks, which is a process which will take like five to six, seven years at most. Okay, so it it is still pretty close. Now we did see the price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies dip on that news. 
not significantly by crypto standards, but still, you know, had people kind of worry a little bit, uh, you know, that uh, perhaps their assets are not safe. So simply put, are our crypto assets in their current form using the wallets that people are using, whether they're hot wallets or cold wallets, are people's cryptos safe today? Today, yes. yes. In five years, no. no. And we don't know exactly at which time the, the, the like the vulnerability uh, the, the becomes more severe. So, so we know we know it's within five six years um, where we will go from uh, having the coin being a very secure system to having like uh, large blocks of Bitcoin moving as if they were uh, as a ghost were in the machine uh, and just like breaking keys on, on large accounts. At that point, Bitcoin is pretty much at the mercy of those with the large quantum computers. So if they're not adversarial, they may just take like the old coins, which the, for which the keys are lost. If it's an adversarial entity, they could also uh, break a large exchange and uh, wreck havoc on the on, on the blockchain. So the, 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 today, today you're safe. Uh, but the threat will re rise sharply in the next few years uh, before 2030. And we'll talk a little bit more about the future and also about the solutions. But quickly, a message to our audience. If you're watching this far, thank you. We will be doing more educational videos increasingly in 2025. So if you're not subscribed to our channel, why don't you subscribe now? Give us a like. We appreciate it. Give us a thumbs down if you think this conversation is not uh, of any interest. That's also acceptable. And if you have any comments or questions, you know, put them in the description or in the in the comments there. Uh, we'd be happy to answer them and even forward them to Pierre-Luc uh, if necessary. He's quite active, by the way, especially on Twitter. Uh, so um, you might get some interesting answers there. Top chair to Flow channel. Yes, the main channel in Canada. <laughs> sure. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So, um, yeah, how can people protect themselves? Uh, I mean, what, what, what technologies are available today if people already want to kind of front run and perhaps learn how to use tools that are already available and otherwise, you know, what's coming? And then you, of course, tell us about what you're building as well. Yeah, today there are very few solutions, uh, at least for cryptocurrencies. So like your Google Home is already resistant to quantum attacks. Your iMessage is resistant. Zoom is, Zoom is resistant. Uh, wow. A, a lot of the communication infrastructures are resistant. WhatsApp, WhatsApp. Um, and Meta, like it, all the messaging is already quantum resistant. Uh, like it, like it. I think it's 30% of web traffic right now is already quantum resistant. Uh, but for blockchains, there are very few solutions. So for Bitcoin right now, there's nothing to do but wait until there is a four, which introduced quantum resistance. So, so there are people working on that. Uh, for Ethereum, there's the, our wallet. So the wallet produced by Polyglo, which is the, the, for which we build the uh, smart contact wallet. So it's a wallet that lives directly on the blockchain. Uh, and we have an extra condition when you do transaction where the blockchain must verify a quantum resistant transaction. So it's a quantum resistant uh, signature, which is important, uh, for which we don't have quantum algorithms that can break those uh, the century. It's a, it's a text similar for classical computers and quantum computers. To be clear, your wallet is a cold wallet, I imagine. Uh, it is the warm wallet right now, in the sense that's warm wallet. It, 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 like it lives on your browser. Uh, in your browser. So like a, we're interested like the, the levels of security. Eventually we want a full offline cold wallet that does uh, a quantum resistance signature not connected to the internet. Uh, but this is a higher tier of security, really like going up the tiers of security. Right now it's um, a browser wallet, wallet that uses quantum resistance signatures. So it means that, that um, adversaries cannot, cannot take the public keys which are on the blockchain and use them against you. Whereas like all their existing wallet, uh, ledger, mask, whatever, the public are on the blockchain. So the adversaries just take them air and private keys from us. The adversaries, it's an interesting term. Of course, we don't think about that in crypto terms so often. But let me ask you a couple of quick, quick fired questions that we're going to wrap up because we want to keep this short and, and really accessible. Uh, and those are maybe some candid questions. But is any blockchain more quantum resistant than another right now? For example, is Bitcoin more secure than Solana or, or Ethereum more secure than Polygon or? No, they're all the same. All the same. So, so layer one, layer two. Yeah, they're, they're all the same. The, the cryptography that Satoshi picked 
somehow people decided that it's not broken, then don't fix it, and they're all using the same cryptography. So they're all pretty much the same degree of uh, quantum vulnerability. The upgrade pack is almost all the same for all of them. Uh, they're, and they're all as slave in the upgrade cycle. Are you safer? Okay. Uh, th th there are a few quantum resistant blockchains that exist. There's a quantum resistant ledger. Uh, but then like the distribution is much smaller. So like all the infrastructures are pretty good. Okay. Are you safer if you are holding your Bitcoin, your, your crypto tokens uh, on an exchange versus if you're cold storing it? Uh, cold storage is better. Exchange... Uh, so, sorry, just, just to qualify my question, safer from a quantum attack point of view. Uh, cold storage. Uh, but the, the exchange often they put all the, their own coins in like a few big addresses and they reuse their addresses, which means that their public keys are exposed. If you put all your cold storage in an address for which you have never used the address, it's a bit safer. safer. Okay. Because and obviously, it's, it's you spread. Okay. And obviously, if you spread your, your crypto assets, your digital assets on various wallets, you're even safer. Yeah, because it's more keys to break. Exactly. Very simple. Okay. And maybe this is a bit of a funny question, but could quantum breakthroughs actually uh, accelerate blockchain innovation? Or is it already? Uh, I, I think so. I think so. So the, um, the, there's a lot of connection between just the theory of like money systems and quantum. It's, 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 it's a bit strange, but like the nature seems to give us that link. Uh, like the quantum information as a field started with quantum bank notes to use quantum. The fact that quantum information cannot be copied copy. to create unclonable bank notes, no. which is one of the main uh, properties of Bitcoin is that you cannot double spend. Um, and uh, over time, like there will be quantum internet and the quantum internet enables new cryptographic <laughs> protocols, which we cannot do classically. So like we'll be able to have blockchains where you can like send word to uh, but like uh, remote computers and like have them do calculation and prove to you that they deleted the data, the data, which you cannot do classically. Like if I send you the, the data and I need to prove you, you, uh, you need to prove me that you can delete the data. There's no way for me to verify. But if we're on a quantum network, uh, there's a way for you to prove me that you never look at the data. And like, I think it will enable new uh, protocols and like uh, the, the, the new services on blockchains, which we just cannot do right now because the, 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 like it's not possible for classical cryptography. We'll see how this video does, but if it does really well, I think we were, it would be worthwhile doing a, a part two where we explore more some of those quantum and, and blockchain innovations. Final question for you. Um, what, what's the next milestone in quantum and when does it happen? Uh, in the next three years, uh, we will see increasingly larger quantum processors. So in 2020, 2025 is going to be the international year of quantum at the United Nations. In 2025, I think we will see uh, several quantum processors with at least 1,000 qubits uh, doing all the basic operations that they need uh, for to, 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 uh, the, that will be able to break crypto like three, four years after. Okay. Well, if, if 2025 is the quantum year, according to the United Nations, we should definitely do a follow-up interview. I'm going to let you go, but thank you very, very much, Pierre-Luc, for uh, this uh, very spontaneous kind of last-minute interview. We're going to try to publish it tomorrow. Um, well, so for those who are watching this, this would be uh, Friday, December 13th. Uh, but thank you very, very much. Appreciate your insights, and let's have you on again very, very soon. Um, yeah, for those who've watched, if you enjoyed it, you know, give us a thumbs up share your comments uh, and share the video because this is very, very informative and I think it was pretty accessible to I understood all of it. So I'm sure most of you will as well. Thank you very much and see you around, folks. Take care.